Jesus gives you, Lord, and I'm honored to be standing here in front of you today to share an experience that took me from wonderings about the universe to actually being able to explore a tiny part of it through the NASA SOFIA program. This is a wonderful overview of our of what it is that I actually did with Howie Fane, my partner. Um, it was done on WBC TV TV. This is a stellar mission. Two Worcester teachers teaming up with NASA, and it's a first for Massachusetts. Well, this summer, they will get an up-close look at the stars. And as Paula Evans shows us in tonight's Eye on Education, the mission goes far beyond science. Stacy Lord and Howie Fain are always looking for new ways to teach their students together in their East Middle School classroom. And this summer, the Worcester duo will reach new heights. When you told your students that you'd been accepted into this incredible NASA program, how'd they react? Oh, yeah, you going up in a rocket? <laughs> no, not a rocket, but a 747, and it's the world's largest flying telescope. It's part of a NASA program known as SOFIA. We're going to the stratosphere. In two 10-hour overnight flights, Mr. Fane and Ms. Lord will help scientists conduct a series of experiments. It's, it's not only what we can see, it's what we can't see. They'll be using the telescope to get a better understanding of our universe. Constellations that look like this to the naked eye are alive with colors through the infrared telescope. And that's where Miss Lord comes in. She's not a science teacher. Even NASA sees the importance of the arts. Miss Lord teaches art many times right alongside Mr. Fane's science class. The art is a, is, is, a, is a portal to an understanding and an appreciation and a sensibility about space. When we talk about the importance of STEAM education integrating the arts with science and math, this is the perfect collaboration. Mr. Fane is teaching science right here, while Miss Lord is helping students interpret that science education in art right over here. Well, it definitely enhances the learning because when you're learning all that and then putting into art, and the teachers can't wait to share their sky-high adventure with their students. I want to come back with a better understanding and to understand how that information equals the visualization of these invisible forces. I'm always looking for a challenge in something new to show my kids. It's a thrill of a lifetime, quite honestly. So Ms. Lord and Mr. Fane, the only two from Massachusetts, they'll head to California in August for their week-long mission, and we wish them the best of luck. If so that's a wonderful overview of what it is that we did. Um, Paula Evans came into my classroom and spent, well, she said 45 minutes, but it ended up being over two hours. And my students were absolutely thrilled with it um, and very engaged the entire time, which I was very pleased with, because pushing two hours, two and a half hours in the art room um, on the same piece of uh, art it is um, pushing even middle school students. Uh, but before I get into talking a lot about Sophia at the moment, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, I'd like to explain who I am, and then what has led me to this point. I'm what many would call a creative, someone who's always looking at things from different angles, spinning ideas around, in my head, moving, shifting, shaking things up, or what I am often known to say to my students, I like to have my thoughts and ideas sit and percolate for a bit, letting them spin around in that whirlwind of a brainstorm, to think divergently, metaphoring, free association, group thinking. It doesn't matter what you call it, it's all the same. It's the first steps in the innovation and creative process. Something you should know about me is that I'm always asking why and what if, which many times leads me to the ultimate question of asking why not. My students know I'm famous for this. Miss, can I use this? Sure, why not? But no, really, can I use this? Sure, why not? And it stops them dead in their tracks because they don't know how to respond to that, to someone agreeing with them or letting them make choices and have a say. What do you mean? Well, do you want to use it? Yeah, okay, so why not? You can use it in your work. Which, by the way, is how I ended up being a AAA ambassador in the Sophia program by asking, why not? How we feign my partner in crime, and I had a civil, similar conversation regarding this as I struggled with Juan and Green to be his partner in applying for the program. Except I became a student for a short bit, thinking of reasons why I shouldn't apply. And then this phrase kept playing in my head, and I actually brought it back to my classroom, and I talked to my students about it. And let me tell you, that was an eye-opener. 
um, they just looked at me and said, Miss, do you want to? And I'm like, yeah, I do. Well, why not? Just do it. And I'm like, okay. So we did, and we applied. I got involved with the a mission uh, when I was in my apartment in crime. Happened to be walking through my room with a piece of paper in his hand saying, hey, what do you think of this? I'd love to do this. And he's an astronomer buff. And I looked at it and I'm just like, well, first off, it's about astronomy and you need a science background. And I'm just like, well, um, let me look at it because I never say no to things. So I took it home, I read it over, and came back the next day and I said, sounds amazing, except I said, I don't have a science background. And they strongly um, recommend that you have a science background. And he's like, well, what do you think? Okay, I said, well, if you're game, I'm game, let's do it. Because, I mean, I know nothing about astronomy. It's really far out of my, my um, realm of, of expertise, but it sounds amazing. And to be able to try something new on this level and bring it back to my classroom is, uh, is very thrilling for me. So we sat down and we applied. I hold the position of the Eastern Region Director of the Middle Level of the NAEA. I am also a middle level director for the Massachusetts Art Association. I'm on the editorial board and contributing writer for School Arts Magazine, and I was just recently awarded the 2016 Massachusetts Art Educator of the Year. In 2015, I received the YWCA's Catherine Erskine Award for Arts and Culture for my involvement in the community in Worcester. I'm one of the co-founders and directors of Massachusetts' largest art and music festival, called Star on the Street which brings over 50,000 people to the city of Worcester for one day. 300 artists, four music stages, three performers, interactive activities, and the best part, it is free. And it's my continued involvement in START that has led us to being awarded the key to the city. Now, why am I sharing all this with you? Because it is by getting involved in what we love to do, our passion for the arts, that is our strongest voice for advocacy. It unites us and empowers us, and when we are empowered and outwardly showing our passion for the arts, that energy radiates and pulses from us and is passed on. It touches every single person, young or old, that we come in contact with, and it categorically is our strongest voice for advocacy outside the arts community to be seen and to be heard, which leads me to why I'm standing up here. Recently, I've been doing a lot of motivational speaking within my community, mostly directed at our youth and encouraging them to follow their dreams, to believe in themselves, and to never give up when things get challenging. A mantra I've cultivated in my classroom over the years is hard does not mean impossible. It just means you need to work a little bit harder and sometimes smarter. <laughs> And it's this very phrase that I had to revert back to as I became more involved in the coursework and the course load and content of Sophia. One of the most important aspects of my classroom is the studio type atmosphere that I have developed, which really lets my students foster and find their voice through the creative process. They work collaboratively on solving challenges that dive deep into personal meaning in individual projects all done in a safe yet stimulating environment. Because that's something you can take out of here and you can apply to everything in life. It's not just about art. And it's nice and it's a little bit, you know, and um, I try to instill that in my students and I, you know what, let's say that I'm successful when you look at the projects that these kids do when they come into my room, they sit down and they say, I can't do this because yes, you can and you walk through it and step through it and they see how you think because if you know the order of thinking in the design process or the scientific method or you know creative thinking then it makes sense and then they can sit down and they can problem solve through them um, to create amenities and pieces which they can sit there in the first place and I can't first. It is the process of creating that is present in all my lessons, allowing them to witness firsthand what it's like to think like an artist, to really dive into the ownership of creating art, along with risk taking, and sometimes failure, where they need to problem solve their way out of a mistake and into a solution. Clearly, the 21st century skills coming alive in the art room, providing the synergy between science, technology, engineering, art, and math. 
It is real life application of ideation and critical thinking that is fostered within my classroom. And it instills in my students the skill sets that they need to apply to become independent thinkers. Coincidentally, it is also the same skill sets that I needed to apply to my own life as I went through the challenges of working full time, taking a graduate level class in a subject that was very unfamiliar to me, taking care of my family, attending the NAEA 2015 conference in New Orleans, <laughs> and life in general. And I'm sure many of you can relate to this. Skill sets that are needed so that I could reach for those very same stars that I have been pushing my students to reach for. Which brings me to what I have to say has been one of the most astounding experiences of my life. This experience has transformed me into who I am today, and that was only made possible because I made a conscious act to get involved in an area of science that I had very little knowledge in. I decided to take a chance, a new risk in a subject that is definitely outside my comfort zone, challenging me as I struggled to keep up with the course load and content. Throughout the first few weeks of class, my mantra was constantly playing back in my head. Hard does not mean impossible. It just means you need to work a little bit harder and sometimes smarter. My students were witness to all this as I brought my work and my struggles into my classroom to show them that sometimes the things that you want most in life are the ones that you need to work the hardest for. And I wanted this. So with the help of Howie, my students, teachers at Worcester East Middle School, mostly the math department, families and friends, um, I passed the class with an 82. And I was shooting for a 65, just like my students would, right? When I came to the classroom the next day, my students, well, my students all knew that I was taking um, the final. And everything's done online, so your idea of score shows right up. So the next day, I walk into my classroom, and every single class came in, like, yes, yes, what'd you get? What'd you get? Did you pass? Did you pass? And I'm just like, oh, okay, you guys all come in, and I'll tell you what, once, not multiple times, not 32 times. Um, and when I told them what I did, and that I actually passed, you would have thought I won the lottery. They hoot and holler, they high five, they dab me, I got hugs. Um, it was like a group effort, and it was wonderful. And this was done over and over again with all my classes. Um, because what I do is I bring everything back into my classroom. Everything is a learning experience, not just for me, but also for my students. Now this slide over here on the right is Newton's law of gravitational, uh, universal gravitation equation. And I came in, and it's my homework due that night, and I'm just like, okay, I gotta figure this out. I'm not quite sure how to do this. I forgot basic math. You know, it's been a very, very long time. So on my board in my classroom, I wrote it out, and I'm trying to puzzle it out. My students were coming in, they're like, Miss, Miss, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to solve this, but this isn't math class. And I'm like, no, it's not math class. But this is my homework, it's due tonight, and I gotta figure it out. So they sit down, and they start looking at it, and they're like, Oh wait, we know how to do that. We're learning that now in math. I said, you do? Well, get up here and help me. <laughs> so now my students are engaged in the process. They're seeing math being applied in a different situation in an art classroom. Um, and they're actually engaged. And they're helping me solve the equation. Over on the left here is a bulletin board in my room with all my Sophia things and my homework papers and all my math equations. And on the left, it said, how many hours did you study last night? And I, for 12 weeks, every single day I came into my classroom, I kept tabs of how many hours I spent the previous night studying. And the kids caught on, and they started looking at it. They're like, Miss, you didn't study last night. I said, no, I was a little busy with my sons. Miss, you studied six hours on Saturday? And I said, yes, I did, because I knew I wasn't going to study the next day, because I had family obligations. Wow, Miss, you know what? That's 12 hours a week you study. And I said, well, you know what? If you want something, you have to work hard for it. And if I don't pass this class, which is a qualifier for the SOFIA program, then I don't fly. These experiences and interactions with my students during these 12 weeks of this class are life lessons that I can guarantee will stick with them as they encounter challenges in their lives. Bringing it back. Graduate level we had to take, it was online, it was 12 weeks. It was 12 weeks while we were still teaching, and um, it 
it made me really uh, empathize with my students <laughs> because I didn't have a background in science and astronomy and taking this and I'm up against a lot of people who actually have their masters or their PhDs. Um, they teach astronomy, they teach science, so they have a nice ground level. Um, when I first got into the class, it was very intimidating, extremely intimidating. And I think the first two weeks were the hardest for me because you get to this point where you're like, oh, I'm so far out of my league here and you know, I don't know if I can manage this because I'm going from ground zero to ground 100. But um, with a lot of help from my students, believe it or not, um, and Howie and other teachers in the building and support of family and friends, um, in a way I pulled it together and I passed. The next uh, footage is from Howie Fancy. I think you get to meet my partner. Hi, I'm Howie Fain. I'm a um, science teacher at the Worcester East Middle School here in Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, a strong course called Astronomy for Teachers Online. Um, all 28, 28 of us, 14 teams of two from throughout the country, took this together. And so many things to say about it. It was hard, challenging, exhaustively complete about information that, um, and uh, thrilling. And the setting up this community of the 28 of us was, was really great. We ranged from people with very little exposure and familiarity to a couple of PhD um, high school teachers that participated. So it was a great exchange. The work was hard. I'm a middle school science teacher. I, I teach both physical and life science as well as technology and engineering. I am not a, a you know, graduate level astronomy person. I do love it and I learned so much. The math was challenging. I had to get in that habit of getting our equations. But the bottom line is it excited us and challenged us and we learned so much. So what is Sophia? So I've talked about how I got involved, a little bit about myself, how I got involved, the application process. Now this is what you guys have all been waiting for. What exactly is it that we did? Um, Sophia is um, Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy. And basically what it is, it's a 747 SP special edition airplane that goes up to about 45,000 feet altitude wise flying. It's the world's largest observatory and it houses a reflective telescope 2.1 meters in diameter. <coughs> so Sophia basically studies light generated by cosmic objects. And the interesting thing about Sophia is that it covers the broadest range of, of the spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum. So you have your visible light, and some of you might even recognize this little, you have your visible light, small little band in the electromagnetic spectrum. What Sophia does is it studies it a little bit to the left. So about where microwaves are. So that's the band that they, they study. And I'll get into why they were able to reach just a wide range with, that, the, with the telescope that they have, um, much broader than Sphinx and um, the Hubble and some of the others. They have an educational and public outreach program, and it's to increase public awareness and understanding of the importance and the value of scientific research in STEM, STEAM education. And we'll get into actually this one right here. Eddie Zalava is the FIA program manager. And I have to say that he is one of the most genuine people I have ever met. His love for the education and for teaching profession is real. And not only teaching, but his love for the arts and the important role they play and the need to play in our educational system. He flew with us on, his second, on our second flight which was quite interesting because he hasn't flown yet. He's been program manager for six years, seven years now, I believe. And never once has he taken a flight. But he chose to fly with us on a second one. And during that flight, it was 10 hours we were up in the sky every night, he sat down with me and we had a lovely, wonderful, very um, inspiring conversation about the mix of science, the blending, the synergy of science and art. 